I'm attorney Gloria Allred, and with me is Jenny Ravelo. And Jenny is going to read her statement. Then we're going to show the video. Then I'm going to discuss what our plan of attack is. All right, Jenny. March 22nd, 2019, I was at the Hangar OC Events Center in Costa Mesa, California, when I met Kubrat Pulev for the first time ever. I was there for the weigh-in. I asked him if we could do an interview for Vegas Sports Daily. He said yes. We did a pre-fight interview. The next day, March 23rd, 2019, after the fight between Kubrat and Bogdan Dunu, I asked Kubrat for a post-fight interview. He said yes. I conducted the interview in a backstage area inside his tent. I started the interview. Mid-interview, he grabbed my face and kissed me. I was immediately shocked and embarrassed and didn't know how to respond. Next, I walked to a table to put my items in my backpack. He grabbed both of my buttocks and squeezed with both of his hands. Then he walked away without saying anything to me and laughed. It made me feel uncomfortable and frustrated that Kubrat Pulev would treat me in such an unprofessional manner. I did not encourage or consent to Mr. Pulev grabbing my face, kissing me, or grabbing my backside. I was there at the event covering the boxing match as a professional member of the press. Kissing a woman on her lips without her consent and grabbing her is not acceptable. Later that night, a friend invited me to an after party. There was an opportunity to interview more fighters, and therefore I decided to go. Mr. Pulev did not join until the very end of the night. He acted like nothing happened, but later at the party, he asked me to remove the kiss from the interview. I did not remove it, and instead I posted it because I wanted people to see what he had done to me. I wanted him to be accountable. I didn't want him to get away with it. What he did to me was disgusting. I felt humiliated. No woman should be treated this way. Mr. Pulev and I were not friends and we're not in a romantic relationship. He had no right to kiss me. I contacted Gloria Allred because I felt that Ms. Allred could help me impose consequences on Mr. Pulev for what he did to me. I never had this happen to me before and I never want it to happen again. A man should ask a woman before he kisses her. That did not happen in this encounter with Mr. Pulov, and that is why I'm speaking out today. Thank you. All right, so we're going to show the video now, and then I'm going to talk about our plan of uh, action. Why don't we just stand over there? Okay. While it's playing video. Show this in a minute. Is it ready? Mm -hmm. Okay, you can just go ahead and play it. It'll be louder. Can you make it louder, please? This is uh, a letter that I have just sent to Andy Foster, 
who is executive officer of the California State Athletic Commission in Sacramento, California. And this is what the letter states. Dear Mr. Foster, please be advised that our law firm represents Ms. Jenny Ravalo, a reporter for Vegas Sports Daily. On March 22, 2019, Ms. Ravalo conducted a pre-fight interview with boxer Kubrat Pulov in preparation for the March 23, 2019 boxing match in Costa Mesa, California, in which Mr. Pulov was a participant. Shortly after the conclusion of the March 23, 2019 boxing match, Ms. Ravalo conducted a post-fight interview of Mr. Pulov. During said interview, Mr. Pulov suddenly grabbed Ms. Ravalo's face and kissed her. Said assault was unwelcomed and unlawful. A video of said unwanted kissing was documented in a video that went viral and can be viewed by the Commission. Following the post-fight interview, Ms. Ravalo walked to a nearby table to put items into her backpack. She alleges that at that time, Mr. Pulov, without Ms. Ravalo's consent, suddenly grabbed both of her buttocks and squeezed them, and thereafter Mr. Pulov walked away and laughed, leaving Ms. Ravalo in shock. Ms. Ravalo was at the March 23, 2019 boxing event as a member of the press, covering the match in her professional capacity. Mr. Pulov's disgusting behavior towards her was unlawful and unprofessional. Business and Professions Code Section 18602.1 states, this is California law, quote, Protection of the public shall be the highest priority for the State Athletic Commission in exercising its licensing, regulatory, and disciplinary functions. Whenever the protection of the public is inconsistent with other interests sought to be promoted, the protection of the public shall be paramount." End quote. Furthermore, CCR Section 390 states in part, quote, any licensee who violates the laws of the State of California or the rules of the Athletic Commission or who conducts himself or herself at any time or place in a manner which is deemed by the Commission to reflect discredit to boxing may have his or her license revoked or may be fined, suspended, or otherwise disciplined in such manner as the Commission may direct." End quote. Mr. Pulev's reprehensible conduct and battery, described above, violates California law as well as the rules of the Athletic Commission. We hereby request that the Commission conduct an immediate investigation into the serious allegations herein. It is my understanding that the next Commission meeting is set for May 14, 2019, in Los Angeles. Pending said hearing, we request that Mr. Pulev's boxing license be suspended. We also respectfully request that the Commission place this issue and Mr. Pulev's conduct on the agenda of the May 14, 2019 hearing, and that Ms. Ravalo and I be permitted to testify on that issue before the Commission at that hearing. We would greatly appreciate your attention to this matter, and we look forward to your response. Very truly yours, Gloria Allred, Allred, Morocco, and Goldberg. So uh, we have emailed that letter, and we're looking forward to his response. And at this time, I'll be happy to take questions. Uh, Jenny is not going to be taking any questions at this time, nor is she doing any interviews. However, after the Commission decides uh, what action, if any, it will take, at that time she'll be available for questions and interviews. So yes. Kubrat released a statement in part stating that Jenny was actually a friend. I just want to reiterate, was March 22nd the first time she met, um, met him? And did she consider him a friend? She alleges that that was the first time that she met him. And no, she did not consider him a friend, uh, just because she had done an interview with him the day before this uh, kiss or and sexual assault. Uh, regarding, the, <clears throat> regarding March 21st, do, is there any indication, any reason why he would think you two were friends? She, you would have to ask him why he would use that word friend with someone he had only met the day before. Okay, 
Um, in, in I mean, if he said acquaintance, that would be one thing. But a friend is a very different term than the term acquaintance. This uh, whole incident is kind of bringing up the question of sexual harassment on the job or any other places where someone has not given consent. <clears throat> How would you say somebody should take action if this were to happen to them? Because, yes, him alleging you know, to all of his followers, to the public, hey, we were friends, she even met us afterwards, we've heard your response to that, but mm -hmm. she met us afterwards, you can't understand how that could give off the, well, why would she go there after? And Is there any type of comedy you can give, like how should people draw the line between friends, acquaintances, this is work, and then what should they do if that line is crossed? Well, even if it were a, a situation where she was his friend, which she was not, he would still need to ask permission to kiss her on the lips. That's an intimate type of activity. And a woman has a right to consent or to say no. She was there doing her job. This is interfering with her professional responsibility. And it's humiliating to her, it's degrading to her, it's treating her not as a reporter doing her job, but as someone who he can just decide to do whatever he wants to do with whenever he wants to do it. It's not appropriate. Um, it certainly uh, causes a lack of respect for boxers, and that's why I think it needs to be brought to the attention of the State Athletic Commission. But no, a woman has a right to say yes or no, and a man needs to ask. So this is a business situation. And no, he, he, even if she were a friend, he would still have to ask, and he clearly did not. Yes, I think it can be considered sexual harassment of her. And Jenny? Were, were there any prior contacts with Mr. Pulev before this incident? Well, she alleges she only met him that Just first time, time the day prior to this incident where he grabbed her. And Jenny mentioned that um, Kubrat asked her to delete the, the kissing part. Can you elaborate on that exchange? Was he threatening in any way? She does not allege that he was threatening her, but just that he made that request. Well, what are your thoughts on the fact— I And mean, I understand that it's gone viral. More, there have been more than a million views of that right. video. Well, um, your thoughts on— this is a very bold gesture, um, and it kind of indicates, uh, like how you were saying, women have a right to feel comfortable doing their job, to not be harassed. In the middle of the question, it seemed kind of random, his action, that that would be his answer to asking if you want to fight another boxer. Is there any comment on the fact that this was such a bold and dismissive action to do in an interview, and even to act like it didn't happen and tell someone to delete it? Is there a sense of like a power struggle, belittling, would you say? If, know. in fact, he told her to d delete it, which is what she alleges, then why would he ask her that if he thought it was okay? I mean, in the law, we could call that potentially consciousness of guilt mm -hmm. or a concern that maybe he shouldn't have done that. Right. I'm glad she didn't delete it. It was the right thing to do. When there's a video— and By the way, if a male were kissed as well, while he was a reporter, by either a female that he was interviewing or by a male, that would also be wrong. Do you expect this to be a tough case at all? I mean, there's a video of it. It's very clear and blatant. Do you expect this to be a tough battle? Well, I, I think that clearly the law, which I cited, uh, provides the guideline for the California State Athletic Commission to take action and to take immediate action. Uh, as I suggested, they could and should suspend his license unless and until they hold a full hearing on it. So he has a right to due process, notice and an opportunity to be heard and a fair hearing. He can get that. Uh, if the if he asks for it, if the California Commission decides to provide that to him, which I believe that if he requested it, he would receive. And we're also asking for a hearing. And what further steps could you take if the Commission doesn't 
respond? How do you expect or how do you talk? Well, I'm just going to uh, have a positive attitude about this, and I think that this is an opportunity for the Commission to fulfill its responsibility to the public and to uphold the standards for licensing of boxers and to show that if those standards are not met or are violated in any way, that they will sanction the boxer in a way that a boxer understands, which has to do with his ability to be licensed for a fight. In addition to removing his license, uh, any financial— Well, we're saying suspending. I'm not saying, you know, ending his ability to fight in California. Uh, what I'm saying is I think they should impose an appropriate sanction. No sanction would, would be uh, a very big uh, disappointment, and I don't think it would be appropriate to do nothing. as. So doing something, and they can talk about what that something is, but it should be some type of appropriate sanction, because they also need to send a message to others. What is appropriate behavior on the part of a boxer? Or just because a boxer won a boxing match, does that mean he can essentially assault a member of the public? And she's a member of the press, she's a member of the public as a result. And no, a boxer who has won a match does not have a license uh, to do or say whatever he wants to. If he does, he faces consequences. And, you know, it used to be that only males covered boxing matches, females are now covering them, and they need to be respected. And, and, and that's what this is all about. We have very strong laws against sexual harassment in California, among the strongest in the nation. We would like those laws to be enforced for the benefit of those for whom they were passed, for whose protection they were meant, and that is anyone who is a potential victim. So other than a resolution with the commission, that means that you, you are also seeking a, uh, uh, something along the sexual har harassment under law? Our focus right now is with the California State Athletic Commission, which has received our letter, and we are looking forward to their taking appropriate action as soon as possible. Do you have any knowledge that Mr. Pulev has conducted himself in this way in past contacts with female we have not explored Mr. Pulov's past uh, history, and if he has any history of sexual harassment or inappropriate behavior, but we have this one documented in reference to the kiss, which is considered an assault if it was not consented to. Um, Mr. Pulov, to the best of my knowledge, has not provided any defense to this, except to say that they were friends, but that's not a defense, even if it were true, and it's not true. No apologies given at all? Uh, we have not asked Mr. Pula for an apology. Uh, I think an apology would be appropriate, but right now we're looking for sanctions. We're looking for consequences, because we think that'll be a teaching moment for him and also for other boxers. It isn't just what a boxer does inside the ring. It's also what he does outside the ring. And clearly, this brings boxing into disrepute. We don't want to wait until a boxer goes much further with a member of the public. I mean, the time to raise this issue is right now and send a message to all of the boxers who are licensed in California. So thank you very much for coming. And uh, we'll certainly let everyone know if, as and when, we receive a response from the commission. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.